Hey, everyone. Well, you know who I am. And what you're looking at right here is um, the last of the big three geared steam locomotives known as the Heisler. The Heisler gets its name from its inventor, Charles L. Heisler. Charles L. Heisler wanted to uh, build a locomotive that would run a central drive shaft beneath the locomotive to uh, power eight wheels on a flexible locomotive that could go around sharp curves and climb up steep grades. There were two engines there was one engine out called the Dunkirk and Gilbert engine, which was a geared locomotive like the Climax. Charles L. Heisler was a German engineer who wanted to uh, make vast improvements on that locomotive, so he, uh, well, invented the Heisler locomotive by doing so. The Heisler locomotive, uh, the first one was built in 1891 and they were built from 1891 until 1941. And out of all the Heislers that were built, there were about 625 of these built, and uh, about 30 of them uh, survive, and uh, 7 of them are uh, operational. 7 to 10, I believe. You're looking at a, a 1920s model that was... Uh, used on the Oregon Lumber Company up in Bates, Oregon. Engine 102. This engine weighed about 38 tons, has 30-inch drive wheels, and is oil-fired. You're wondering, what on earth is this thing? Like, why does it look so strange? Well, that's because a Heisler is not your typical steam engine. The Heisler uses a V2 engine. The V2 engine is um, uses a pair of cylinders inclined and uh, in the shape of a V, like a V8, a car's V8 engine. And that V2 engine goes right smack dab in the middle of the frame underneath the boiler and it drives a propeller drive shaft that goes along the length of the locomotive and the drive shaft gears to the front axle on the front bogey and the rear axle on the rear bogey and connecting rods pass the motion along to the other axle on the bogey yep, right over here and the drive shaft turns when the cylinders get, get steam, or should I say, when the engineer opens the throttle, steam comes out of the, the steam drain and down the drive pipe, and then steam then goes from the drive pipe into the cylinder here, and then from the cylinder, the powers the pistons that turn the propeller drive shaft. And that propeller drive shaft gears to the front axle and the rear axle and the connecting rods pass the motion along. And that's how it goes. Heislers were very smooth operating locomotives. The V2 engine is naturally balanced, so they were very smooth, pretty much at any speed they could go. They were the fastest of the uh, big three geared locomotives of the Shea and Climax. They could outrun their competitors and go to a speed of 26 miles an hour, which was pretty good for a geared engine, but still wasn't really enough to keep up with um, regular traffic for... Um, most engines could go over 35 miles an hour, but the Heisler wasn't a bad engine to use on short lines, whereas the Climax and the Shea mostly worked in the woods. The Heisler worked in the woods, but was uh, 
well used more variety than that of its competitors because of its faster speed. Also, the Heisler has uh, less moving parts that are um, than that of the Shea and the Climax. There are less parts to break down and take apart when they require maintenance, but the problem with the Heisler is they require a heck of a lot more maintenance when uh, the time comes. But there's a trade-off. The Shea, they could be worked on at any given time. The Climax, well, that engine's a piece of junk. The Heisler, they were designed so that they wouldn't have to be serviced so much, but when it was time for them to be serviced, the problem was they needed a heck of a lot of work. Whereas the Shea, they could be serviced at any time and were designed to be easy to work on. The Heisler, however, is not a really difficult locomotive to work on. Well, with the exception is, you have to go underneath the locomotive, underneath the fiery hot boiler, and uh, it can be pretty dirty, and uh, not many people liked that. But the good thing is, they had less parts than that of the Shea and Climax. The Heisler overall was a really good engine. They steamed very well. They fired very well. They were really smooth. They were really good at going around the corners. They were the best for going around sharp corners. Whereas the Shea and uh, Climax, they pretty much buckled at the sharp curves. The thing is, a Shea is un really uh, unbalanced because the drive shaft is on the right hand side. So it tends to buckle a little bit on the really sharp curves and could derail. The Climax is a naturally unbalanced locomotive and the engine set. Whenever that flywheel turns, oh boy, that thing starts coming apart and starts rocking like mad. The Heisler, however, never really had that problem. However, they were a little bit more finicky to fire than that of the uh, Shea and Climax. Well, the Shea, that is. The Climaxes were... Actually, just as finicky as the Heislers, in fact, they were worse. The Heisler is the most engineered of the geared locomotives. This one, the trucks are mostly casted, as you can see on the bogey. This one has the unique feature of having outside frame counterweights. That's because this is a narrow gauge engine, and what the outside frame counterweights did was it put less bearing wear on the axles as well as the fact it gave the crew a much smoother ride. Because uh, even though the engine itself had a naturally balanced, uh, well, cylinder set, going downhill, it could get pretty bumpy with conventional inside frame. So, Heisler Locomotive Works in the 1920s came up with this outside frame to put less bearing wear on the locomotive axles, as well as the fact it made the ride much smoother. As you can see, this right here is the ash pan. It was simple to dump and easy to clean. Also, a lot more of the parts were casted, whereas the Shea and Climax, most of the parts were bonded and riveted or, and bolted, whereas this is more welded and casted and made simple and easier to take apart. And for the Shea, if you wanted to get to the wheels, you'd have to take the entire bogey apart. But for the Heisler, the wheels, these just drop right out. But if you want to get to the line shaft, you have to pull the bogey out. Pull the bogey out, and, uh, well, that's quite a big number of work. And for the Shea, if you want to take the engine set off, you could just pull it right off. But for this, you have to pull the boiler off before you could get to the engine set. The Climax, you don't really have to do much. You could just take one in one cylinder off by one. But each geared engine had its own uh, had its own weaknesses and strengths. The Heisler well had a lot of strengths and a lot of advantages, but also had a lot of cons. The cons were when uh, it came time to work on them, they just required more. More work than that of their competitors but they could run quite a bit longer.
and they were smoother running. This is by far my most favorite geared locomotive. As you can see, I've showed you Meadow River number 7, which is a Shea. I've also showed you Clear Lake Lumber Company number 7, which is a Climax. And this is Oregon Lumber Company number 102, which is a Heisler. And this is by far my favorite of my geared engines, and my second favorite engine in my whole collection. This locomotive is very reliable, giving me really good service, and is a really good performer. She was always a good engine, but the engine sort of has a story to tell, because in 2009, the engine came down with problems. What happened was the entire uh, boiler crystallized right along here, and it completely uh, fell apart. And uh, the engine set literally just slipped, just cracked, and it slipped right out from the frame. Yeah, the whole engine literally just fell apart. Just fell apart on me. The bogies weren't picking up such good electricity. Um, it broke my heart the moment this engine completely fell apart. I cried my eyes out <laughs> when this engine completely fell apart because I really loved this thing. And uh, I was working my ass off. Well, forgive my language. Uh, I was working my ass off to find uh, parts for this engine or um, yeah, anything close to get this thing back up and running. Unfortunately, St. Aubin's Trains had the parts I needed. They had a boiler, they had the inclined cylinders, they had a new set of bogies, they had a cab and tender, they had the stack, the domes, everything. They had pretty much everything I needed, so I called them up, ordered the parts, and when the parts arrived, I literally pulled an all-nighter and stayed up from about 9 p.m. till about 5 a.m. just to put this thing back together and get it running, and sure enough, I got it running. The sound in this locomotive is a Phoenix 2K sound, and it's the only locomotive that has a 2K sound in my collection. The rest have been upgraded to PB9s and PB11s. It's the oldest sound unit in my collection, and I'm proud of it. It has the most beautiful whistle of all the locomotives in my collection. It's a good sound. It's, this is a really good engine. I can't say enough good things about this locomotive. It only takes me five minutes just to oil this thing. There are not a lot of moving parts. It's really easy to maintain. She's a really sweet locomotive to operate. I mean... This locomotive is really awesome. I also ran her at Roaring Camp on Hats Off to Dad. Everyone in the general public, everyone within the uh, club of the Diablo Pacific Short Line loved this locomotive and literally favored it. And this engine just ran and ran and ran. And you're possibly looking at the hardest working geared steam locomotive, model geared steam locomotive, in California, because this engine just keep kept running and running and running and running, and it hauled an 11 car train nonstop. And she's a hardworking locomotive, and this locomotive she'll just keep going and going and going. Ever since I rebuilt her, this thing has been running like a champ. I remember when my parents got me this for my 18th birthday. I told them I wanted a Bachman Heisler. And they saw one for a really good price, and uh, they got it for my 18th birthday. They then had Phoenix put a sound unit in it, and to my surprise, it was the most beautiful sounding whistle I've ever heard. And uh, I've been in love with this thing ever since October of 2006, and since it's rebuilt in 2009, I've been more in love with this thing. It's by far one of my best locomotives. <laughs> It's a really good locomotive. Roaring Camp has a Heisler. So does the Cass Scenic Railroad. So does Sumter Valley. So does Clark's Training Post. So does Stevens Creek in Illinois. There are a good number of Heislers left. Mount Rainier has one. Yeah. There are a good handful of Heislers left still in operation. And it's really neat to see one. Just love that whistle. 
This is a great look, Mom. I'm really thrilled with her. She's been nothing but good to me. And those are her old wheels. I just swapped out her wheels from Luke and Steel Company number 16, since that engine's uh, going to Hawaii and is complete, getting a complete repaint. And they look good on this engine. I also added deer antlers, the Westinghouse cross compound air compressor, no, a single pump air compressor. And some extra piping. I also welded the drive shaft together so uh, the movement is more uh, synchronized. Not to mention the performance has drastically improved. It's just a really awesome look, Mother. I also added the uh, safety guard rails here. As you can see, she's an oil fire. And, of course, I always wanted a logger skidder, so I just recently bought one, and it was only like 30 bucks from a bid from the favorite spot. So, yeah. I got a fairly good log train here. I love this thing. This is such a really good engine. I can't say enough good things about this locomotive. Say hello, 102. That's it for now. That is the Model Heisler Locomotive 102 and my, my baby. This is my baby. That's it for now. Chris9017 out.